Uh, I'm Daniel Shaitan, my name is Nara Munoye. Uh, I welcome everybody to this uh, interaction online. And it is expected of us, though we are not together physically, it is expected of us in our various places to pay attention to the class. We pray that Allah uh, make it possible for us. Today, we are discussing one of the topics of our government's slabs, which is foreign policy. Before I started, before I start discussing the topic, I would like to refer us back to the previous topic that we learned so as to serve as a background in understanding this present topic. If you can remember, in our cl last class, we discussed interdependence of nation nations. You can also call it interaction of nations. You can as well call it interrelationship of nations. What we understand in that topic is that no a single country that can stand on our own. You must relate with other countries so as to benefit from them. Now in relating with other countries, there should be a policy, a law that will guide our relationship. And all these people that are relating with people outside, they do also have a fear at home. The affair at home, the policy that is guiding it, is what we call domestic policy. In another word, we may call it national interest. But the policy that is guiding behavior of a country outside is what we call foreign policy. So, it means that as we are having the interrelationship of nations in the world, we must have foreign policy that we guide that nation, that particular nation, in relating with other countries. Another thing that you need to understand is what we call international relation. International relation, as I said it, it is embedded in the, what I've just said, is relationship among the countries. In international relation, we have what we call international law and international treaty. International law is the law that we guide our relationship. International treaty is the agreement between two or more countries when they are relating together. All these things, we are supposed to understand it so that we are able to understand this topic better. You look at the world, you see the introductory focus. I throw a question. The question is that foreign policy of a country means that the policy A made by a country in another country. B policy made by a state in internal consumption. C general principle guiding a state international relation. The last one option B is principles requiring mandatory obedience from international organization. Everybody will agree with me that correct ans answer to this question is option C, the general principle guiding a state in international relation. That is foreign policy for you. That is foreign policy. So, you listen to me, inshallah, in this lesson, we are going to look at some areas. Number one, we are going to know the meaning of the concepts. Directly, we've already known that through the question. Number two, we are going to look at objectives, aims and objectives of this uh, foreign policy. Number three, we are going to look at, specifically, we are going to look at foreign policy in Nigeria situation. We are looking at Nigeria foreign policy, the principles 
that are guiding Nigeria foreign policy. Then we are going to look at factors that are affecting Nigeria foreign policies, Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs, we are going to discuss it, and the functions that they are performing. Then we are going to look at the non-alignment alignment policy. In this lecture as well, we are going to take a look at uh, Africa as a centerpiece of Nigeria foreign policy. I employ, I employ everybody to follow me in, in through my discussion. Foreign policy definition is the method or strategy or principle adopted by a country to pursue our own national interest while relating with other countries. Listen to me again. Foreign policy is a principle, is a strategy, is a method hmm, that a country adopted in order to pursue our own end while relating with others. You listen to me very well so that I give you analysis of these concepts. When you are relating with others, surely you are going to influence by that very person. But you must understand that your own core value must be retained in relating with others. So you now, foreign policy is now telling us you are going to look for a policy that will assist you to maintain your own core value at the same time you benefit from your relationship with other countries. In another meaning, they say foreign policy is a method to promote domestic affairs in international relations. Foreign policy is to promote domestic affairs in the international relation. That's the meaning of foreign policy. Now we are going to look at aims and objectives of foreign policy. Number one is to promote, project, protect the national interest of a country. You should not be confused about the word national interest. I said it can also mean a domestic policy, a domestic interest, domestic affair of a country. The first thing to, uh, uh, to, that a country wanted to achieve is to protect, promote that national interest. Number two, under the hands and objectives, is to establish cordial relationship with other countries in the world. We are together in this world, we must live in a friendly manner. If otherwise, we are going to be having problem. One of the objectives of the foreign policy is to establish that cordial relationship. Number three is to recognize sovereignty of another country. Sovereignty, as we all know, in our SS1 topics, is that absolute power of a state over its own citizen. Absolute power without intervention of external aggression. That is when a state, a country, when we say a state, we mean a country. When a country has power to govern our own territory without inter intervention of external aggressors. That is what we call sovereignty. So we should respect this sovereignty when we are dealing with other countries. Means that we should not intrude into our own into their own domestic affair. Number three is to enhance and promote world peace. Foreign policy, one of the aims and of objective that we wanted to achieve through it is to promote peace in the world. Number four is to eradicate, number five, sorry, is to eradicate racial discrimination, racism in the world. The world comprises of different continents. We have African continent, we have European continents, 
And we do believe, some, do, some people believe that some, uh, one, some, some uh, continents, they are superior to other continents. No, we are not going to achieve that in this foreign policy. What we are achieving among the hymns and objectives is to eradicate any form of racism. That Nigeria as an African country, we relate well with uh, Germany. We relate well with Saudi Arabia in the Asia continent without any discrimination. Another one is to advance techno technological system. That is when we are related together, so we are going to advance the use of modern technology in communication, in science, and some other things. These are the aims and objectives of foreign policy. Now we are moving to factors that affect foreign policy. When we say factors that affect policy, we are saying that what are the things that a country needs to consider when formulating a foreign policy. You are going to look at some things. You want to make a plan. You want to do something. You must consider some things. Your limitation and some other things about you. So what are the factors that we need to consider when we want to formulate policy? Number one is national interest, domestic affairs. As, as, as I explained earlier. Number two, economic status of the country. Hmm? Economic status of the country, we were told by the scholars that the economic status of the people in, of the countries in the world is of three categories. We are the first world country, we have the second world country, then we have the third world country. Means that the countries in the category of third world countries that status is going to affect uh, in the uh, policy that the country wanted to formulate. So Nigeria, as one of the third world countries, must consider the economic status when she wanted to formulate policy. Number two is geographical location. Geographical location is the, 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 the situation, I mean the, the location of a country in the world. We do have some countries, their location is far. They are not have free access to other countries. Look at Nigeria that we are discussing here, that we are discussing foreign policy of Nigeria. Look at Nigeria now. You look at one map, especially the African map, you will see that Nigeria is located in a strategic place at the center. I must tell you, you will soon understand it when we move forward in this cause, in this topic, that that makes Nigeria to be a big brother Africa because of the centric location of the country. Location is one of the factors that you are going to consider when you are formulating a foreign policy. The next one is the population. The population of the country affects the formulation of the uh, policy. Nigeria, as we all know, is one of the most black populous countries. So it affects our, uh, our, the formulation of our policy. We must understand that. The policy that we are going to formulate, that will be affected with the large size of the country, is going to be different from that of the Togo, that of the Ghana, that they are, they are not, uh, that, uh, um, with the, that, that do not have the large population as we do in this uh, country. The next one is historical background. Historical background of the country is one of the factors. When you look at where you, you are coming from, eh, Yoruba in their home, why say, say, they will say that more many won't say. So you look at the family background before you ask, if a country wants to formulate a policy in the world, must look at where she was coming from. Eh? One of our own historical backgrounds is the experience that we had during the colonial period, mm? between 1900 to 1960. It's one of the factors that we used to consider. And when we start looking at the foreign policy of each government in this country, you will see that it, it reflected in the formulation of those policies. 
Then another one that we are going to look at is political ideology. Political ideology is the political belief of a country. Mm, be it liberalism, be it communism, be it feudalism. This ideology that a country are uh, uphold we affect the formulation of the policy. We affect those countries that she is going to relate with. Are they communist countries? Are they feudalist uh, countries? Are they uh, liberal countries? And some other ideologies. So we should understand that. The next one is the prayer group. The prayer group. The activity, you know, prayer group, as we learned it in our SS2 topic, is an organized a group, of, group of people that attempt to influence government policy in order to achieve their own interests. So the activities of the prayer group is among the factors that the country needs to consider. You look at the demand of the prayer group because they are democratically allowed to operate in the country. For the country that is using democracy, must listen to what this prayer group are saying. And another one is the globalization, the effect of globalization. The effect of globalization is among the things that influence the formulation of the foreign policy. We are in a single world now, uh, in a single village, they call it global village. Now what they have been in America is going to be reflected in Nigeria within two seconds. These are among the things that affect the formulation of the foreign policy. The next one is public opinion. Public opinion. Public opinion is the total views, beliefs, opinions held by majority people of a country by the government policy. You know, we are discussing policy. Though we are discussing foreign policy, we do have domestic policy. But foreign policy is going to be influenced eh, as well by the opinion of the people. Eh? Like, uh, we, we will get to it. That was the time Nigeria signed very recently. Don't, 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 let, me, don't, let, don't let us give that uh, example. Very recently, when the issue of gay has become something of practice in the world, this uh, powerful country, they are advising, in fact, threatening some country to adopt it. But the, foreign, uh, the public opinion of the Nigerian people rejected it. That is why Nigeria didn't adopt it. So foreign policy is one of the factors that we need to consider when we are formulating our, our public opinion. Sorry, it's one of the factors that we need to consider when we are formulating our foreign policy. Then the next one is the leadership style. The leadership style. The each government has different kinds of people with different kinds of styles mm, that are not the same. Their styles, their traits, leadership traits also used to reflect in the formulation of the policy during their own regime, which you understand that. The last one that I say here is international membership. We do have many bodies in the world. The first of it is United Nations, we have ECOWAS, we have OAU. If a country belongs to, it, to this body, the policy made in that body is going to affect the policy that that country is going to make in our own territory. Because it must not go in contrary to the policy that the body that it has already given allegiance to. So these are the factors that affect foreign policy. Now, we want to look at Nigeria foreign policy. Though I have already brought some related some things from the factors that affect foreign policy to Nigeria's situation. So we don't need to go back the, to the factors that affect Nigeria foreign policy. The next thing that we are discussing here relating to Nigeria, because that is our own target, is the foreign policy, different foreign policies of government in Nigeria since 1960 we gained independence. My students, be with me. We are still on. We gained independence in 1960. Between 1960 and now, we do have many different governments. The first one that we had, everybody understand, is Balewa government. Between 1960 and 1966. Balewa government adopted certain policy that when we look at it, we are going to distinguish it away from the government that succeeded 
the, 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 the government. Now we want to look at them one by one. Balewa foreign policy. To some scholars, it was so, so conservative. Conservative, then pro Western. Pro Western, in, it means that uh, it tends, the policy tends toward Western world. I will explain, I will say something here so that you understand it. Because we are going, coming to do it here, yeah? don't forget my student, all these topics we are, we are already learned, we are just make, it, making this kind of revision just to refresh our brain because we are preparing for why. In non alignment policy or non alignment movement that we discussed, that we are coming also to discuss in this topic, we understand that non alignment is you should, that you are neither belong to domestic, uh, to Western world or to the uh, Eastern world. We call it capitalist bloc and the communist bloc. So the Western world, the people in the Western geographical location of the world, the people in the Europe, discuss, subscribe to the ideology of capitalists. Mostly the people in the East, represented by Russia, subscribe to the uh, uh, ideology of communists. So this ideology of non-alignment is to be neither capitalist blood, that is Western world, and uh, non to uh, Eastern world, that is communist world. But this Balewa era that we are discussing is pro-Western because the policy then go in line with the British policy, our colonial master. And we must give excuse to that person. So because we just gained independence. And also, in 1960 that we gained independence, we didn't have total full control of the governance of our own country. It was 1963. You should understand, under our constitutional development, it was 1963 Republican constitution, constitution that we had a full control of the Nigerian uh, government. So, Nigeria Abibalewa uh, era tended towards the uh, uh, British policy. And equally, we are going to enlist some policies made during the time. Number one is that Balewa era signed Anglo, Anglo Nigeria defense pact with British in 1961. This Anglo Nigeria defense pact is the military operation of the British country eh, in Nigeria territory. Though, as I said earlier, when we are discussing factors affecting foreign policy, public opinions, Nigeria then, Nigerian, the enlightened, enlightened Nigerians then, they expressed their own opinions. Eh? The public opinions was heard and they, they, they disproved, they, 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 they did not allow, they did not accept the signing of that treaty, of that part. So what later happens is that Balewa government abrogated that part. You can see how public opinion influences foreign policy. Opinion of Nigerians then, in 1963, influenced the policy of Balewa government to abrogate the part that he has, she has already signed with British in 1962. Then number two, that we should understand under the Balewa government, is it championed the expulsion of South Africa from Commonwealth of Nations. Commonwealth of Nations is a nation of the former colonies of the Britain. When they gain independence, they are doing what we call family meeting. Hmm? So I can call Commonwealth as family meeting, that, that we are doing it because we are all the colonies of this country. So Nigeria championed the cause of expulsion of South Africa from Commonwealth because of what? Because of the apartheid policy. Apartheid policy, we are coming to understand it, is the policy discrimination that is the black race in on the soil of Africa. Hmm? Or in the soil of Africa. In South Africa, dear, Africa country, and we are we, we discriminated against the black people, the owner of the territory. You can remember about Mandela, so don't worry, we are going to uh, say something on it, if Allah permits. Number three, 
is it broke diplomatic relationship with France over the testing of atomic bomb in Sahara Desert. The government of Balewa broke diplomatic relations. Everybody, every country, every country in the world, they have what we call relationship, diplomatic relationship. So, immediately France tested that bomb, the Balewa government uh, broke relationship with uh, her. Another one is that during Balewa, we were together, established, we are together with other countries to establish organization of African unity, that is OE. Mm -hmm. Number, the next one, the government initiated what we called Child, Be Child Basin Commission. Child Basin Commission is one of the things that we should understand under the foreign policy of Baliwaya. The next one is that it is very, very reluctant. The government was very, very reluctant to relate with the communist state, with Russia. Even we last that, Nigeria did not allow Russia to have embassy in Nigeria because Russia represented or led communist world and we are related with capitalist world because we are a very good child, a good slave of Britain. And don't forget we say, we said foreign policy of Alewa is pro-Western. After we have gotten that of the Balewa, the next area era is Gowan era. Somebody may say there that uh, Madam, what about Agui era? Agui Rusi era. We all know under military uh, uh, rule in Nigeria, Agui Rusi era is a very short lived uh, era. Uh, it Rusi spent just six months. And that six months, he was trying to stabilize the country because it was as a result of coup d'etat, the first of, of, of experience that we have in this country. So we, what, we, what is unique about the government, if you do not forget, I want to refer you back to military government under Erosi era, is that Erosi introduced Decree 34, what we call unitary system of government in this heterogeneous nature of this country. So Balewa, I want to say that she didn't have a very formidable, a non-foreign policy. That's why we didn't discuss it. Now we are on the one administration. We all know that the one succeeded uh, Balewa within that same year, in 1966, and the one administration spent like six, I mean, nine years. Goan has better started the relation with other countries during the war because. When the one got to the power, what we had between 1967 and 1967 and 1970 is civil war, three years war. We will also call it Biafran war. Mm -hmm. So, Goran admission experienced this war. So, the one we didn't have during this period, a formidable foreign policy. Though the one was related with British at the time, later related with uh, 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 Russia because it, it, the government needed ammunition from the country. Now that is Gowan. We want to look at the policies under Gowan during the era of Gowan. Number one that we need to know that is very, very uh, essential in that government is that Gowan administration together with uh, uh, Togolese uh, president, uh, Yadama, they established what we call Economic Community of West African countries, West African states, in 1975. That is number one. Number two, the country then related with communist bloc hmm, by allowing Russia to establish embassy in Nigeria. If you do not forget, we said during Balewa era, the, um, Moscow, that is Russia, did not have embassy in our country because we are pro-Western then. Are we to say that government of Gowan uh, is pro-Eastern? I, I cannot say. But what I know is that he established, the government established relationship with uh, Russia by allowing Russia to establish embassy in Lagos, the then capital of the country. 
The administration gave financial support to the liberation, liberation committee of the whole age. Used to give money. The government used to give money to the liberation committee of OAE so that all other countries, all other African countries that, that were still under colonization should be liberated. It's one of the policy, foreign policy made by the government. Then another one is that the government broke diplomatic relationship with Israel in 1973 when Israel occupied the territory of Egypt. You know, we are coming to explain Afrocentric nature of Nigerian foreign policy. In the next uh, era that we are going, that is Muritala of Asanjo era, because it was then that we have a very defined eh, Afrocentric nature of Nigerian foreign policy. Because don't forget, under this topic, we are coming to learn Africa as a centerpiece of Nigerian foreign policy. Then you will understand what we mean by Afrocentric nature of Nigerian foreign policy. Goan administration broke relationship, diplomatic relationship with Israel in 1973 because Israel occupied a certain territory of uh, Egypt. And you know, Egypt is one of the African countries. That is why I think that is why it made the government to, broke, to break sorry, relationship with that uh, uh, country. Now, the next government is. Muritala Obasanjo era. Muritala Obasanjo era was between 1975 and 1979. Why do we call it Muritala Obasanjo era? The reason is that Muritala was the first president, was the president of the country. Because when there was what we call Palace Coup, Palace Coup is a bloodless coup that was carried out by some military officers. So that coup brought Muritala government into the power. So Muritala was the head of the government. Obasanjo then was one of the uh, deputies. We have Tibilos Damduma and we have uh, uh, what we call uh, uh, Yaradua, Musa Yaradua. Then. Now, Obasanjo was the deputy, but Muritala was assassinated. Within six months, he attained the power. Because he, the guy wanted to live a, a, a life of man of people, hmm? forgetting that uh, people around him they are very they have what we call ill intention towards him, and he was killed through the coup carried out by Dimka. Even somebody in his government, the person that called uh, Bisala, is one of the coup plotters that killed uh, the president. So the the coup d'etat, though was successfully carried out, eh, they were successful, you know, killed, uh, they, 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 they killed the president, but they didn't take over the government. They did not take over what? The government. So the deputy, the next thing is to assume the post. Hmm? So the government still continues. That is how we are referring to this regime era as Muritala stroke of Basanjo regime between 1975 and 1979. During this regime, we had what we call a very serious foreign policy because they meant the business and the business of that foreign policy centered on Africa, the colonization, the DE colonization of Africa, that is liberation of Africa from the colonization. The first thing the government did is that it, 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 she established what they call ADDG, ADDG Commission. ADDG Commission was to see to the redefinition of uh, foreign policy. So this government it was very serious. The policy then was vibrant, the foreign policy was vibrant, was uh, dynamic, Afrocentric. Eh? In fact, when the political scientists discussing the Nigeria government since 1960, when they come to this government as regards the foreign policy, they made it, they used to make it special. Hmm? Because we have a very well-defined foreign policy during the era. What is very common, what is very known eh, in this area is the liberation of African country. Liberation of African country 
you know, it gave full support to the liberation and independence of Angola in 1960, 1976, 1976, sorry. Eh? Then number two is that it supported West African people organization in Namibia. So these are among the, 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 the groups, eh? the nationalist group movement that seeking for the self-government for their own country. So the government of uh, Basanjo supported these people. The next one to know is that the Balewa Abi Obasanjo Great Alaw government, Great Alaw Obasanjo government, nationalized British petroleum uh, uh, organization company, Shell. We call Shell Shell now. It was then that the government nationalized it. Made, government that government made it Nigerian, though it was owned and established by Britain. It's because British did not support the. The apartheid that is going on in in, uh, in 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 South Africa, Britain then was like doing some mal in Namibia. So if you are you are to continue in that relationship, because I'm after my of African colleagues, if you are to continue with that relation, I will break my relationship with you. Not breaking the relationship, though you are not colonize me, I will nationalize that company. So the back play then it was 80 percent ah. Uh, uh, nationalized uh, by Nigeria people. Then the country persuaded other Africa to boycott National Olympic of uh, the Montreal Olymp Olympic because of the apartheid policy. So that we know we have this Olympic game and some other things organized by these, uh, the colonial uh, countries. He persuaded, the government persuaded other African countries to, to boycott it. Just to show the sign of you know, not going well with you by discriminating a man against our African people in South Africa. This is little about uh, uh, the uh, government of Murita Laobasanjo. The next one is Sagari government between 1979 and 1983. Sagari government is like a the policy, a reverse foreign policy. Because it, the government refers all back to pro Western of Balewa government. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the government has much, though we must do, we must still have, we must still say some things that is known to the administration. The next, the first one is the disapproval of the Libya government uh, in charge. If the government told the Libya government, the Libya forces to leave charge. So one African country is dominating another African country. What is that? Eh? Number two is that it maintains policy. The policy that the people before, before him has been pursuing. Eh? The apartheid policy, it maintains that policy. The another one that is known to the government is that it expelled illegal alien people in this country, aliens in Nigeria. Illegal aliens, that is the people of another country that are in Nigeria without having fulfilled the conditions. The necessary condition of staying in the country in 1983. And don't forget that the, the government that followed are uh, also continuing that, uh, that is, uh, Buhari government. That is our own next government. Buhari government is the government that, uh, you know, we said the Gari government is a referred uh, government, that the government that refers the foreign policy back to the first policy of Palewa, that is the pro Western. This government is a government that wants to refer that pro Western to uh, the Afrocentric uh, policy of Murita Lawabasanjo. So, it also, the, uh, the administration also has some things. One of it is that the government, the first thing is that it restated the commitment for the liberation of Africa. You can see that it has an element of Afrocentric. Mm? It committed itself to the decolonization of Africa. The, even the, the Minister for, for Foreign Affairs there, Ibrahim Gambari, made a talk to all African countries on this purpose. Mm? Make a talk then. So then number two is that if the government tried to pay all the debt eh, of the country that we had in some uh, one of these uh, financial institutions, IMF and some other country. Then number three is that he made himself known eh, as a chairman of apartheid movement in United Nations. Hmm? 
so that we are opposing that policy. So I'm the chairman of the anti-apartheid uh, movement in uh, South Africa. Then uh, this country also supported Sahrawi Demo Arab Democratic Republic. So for the liberation. So this little, this little that we have for us, Manda, Buhari, and the next one is Babangidaya. Babangidaya, to me, it's just like that of Shakariera. Because we went back to the pro Western. Though there are so many things that the government did that shows that the government was Afrocentric, as we as I've been saying it. The government, you know, the first thing he did is that the government organized what we call Conference of Foreign Policy, uh, led by Professor Bolaji Akinyemi. It seemed, it was seen to Nigeria then that uh, this government meant foreign policy uh, issue. But later we learned that it was uh, uh, a kind of game. As we all know, the government very well, they said that they used to describe the government as a uh, Maradona government. The government that used to drip of people. So, what are the things that we need to know that is very, very important in this government under foreign policy? Is it, the government contributed greatly to the establishment of ECOMONG. You know, ECOMONG is the military wing of the ECOWAS to make peace, the settlement of some disputes in African country. Number two, it introduced technical aid courts eh, to all countries that are very less developed mm, compared to Nigeria. Then number three is that it launched a crusade against dumping of toxic and radioactive waste in Africa continent. You know, Africa is like a dumping place. These European people, when they wanted to tell, you know, very recently, this uh, COVID-19 uh, issue, pandemic, they were looking for the vaccine. They said they wanted to carry text to test if the person is functioning well. And they cannot even test it in America when we're having like 100,000 deaths. Uh, they cannot test it in Spain, in Italy, in these um, this, uh, Western uh, European countries. And they are coming to Nigeria, they are coming to Africa. That we have lesser. Hmm? That we have lesser. So, means that the world they believe that you are a dumping ground. One of the things that is very, very uh, important that we welcome in this foreign policy, in the foreign policy of this government, is that it's not a crusade against this uh, dumping of uh, this uh, toxic and radioactive uh, waste. Then number one, number the next one is that the government re-established the diplomatic relation with Israel in 1992. If you do not forget, we said that Gowan broke diplomatic relations with Israel in 1973 because Israel occupied a territory space in another African country, Egypt. But this country now re-established a diplomatic, diplomatic relationship with Israel. So these are not the things that we know under the government. Then we should understand that the government tried to champion some causes hmm, in Africa. It's one of it is that he is the one that through the economy, set to the issue of Liberia, though it, the government was not successful. It was the next government, uh, the Abasha government that we are discussing now, that Allah gave that victory to. Abasha government, it was between 1993 and 1998. Abasha government is not respected, it's not allowed by international community. You are even given the sanction during the regime. But Abasha government, notwithstanding, the government did some things, uh, do something in foreign policy. One of the things is that is the one the government is the one that gained the, the liberation, the settlement of the Liberia issue. Then another thing is that uh, the government re reinstate the government of uh, Hamatija, Hamatija of Syria. No. So these are the policies, the foreign policies of different governments in Nigeria since 1960. Then the next thing that we are going to look at is the foreign policy. I mean, the uh, Nigeria Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Nigeria Ministry of Foreign Affairs. At times, we should not be confused. At times, they used to call it external affairs. You know, we are talking of affairs that is operating in outside their own country. 
Mm-hmm. So foreign affair or external affair. So the, there is a ministry for it. So the ministry of uh, foreign affairs. So the ministry of foreign affairs or external affairs is a department established to handle foreign matter, foreign affair matter of a country. So at independence, it was operating under the uh, guidance of the premier eh, in 1960. Premier, uh, the, uh, the Prime Minister, sorry, of Balewa government. Eh? Later, the government, our own, the government that we said was uh, very serious with uh, foreign policy, creates a ministry for it. That is, of us, uh, Minister of Passenger Regime. Minister of Passenger, no established ministry. So, this ministry, what are the functions that the ministry is performing? Mm -hmm. The ministry that deals with foreign affairs of the country. Number one, it collects vital information through foreign service officers abroad. We do have Nigerian officers in abroad, in UK, in Moscow. So it collects information from them, necessary information that Nigeria, the country, may need. So this is one of the first uh, uh, function. The second one is that it conducts government activities as regards foreign policy and commonwealth matter. Eh? Number three is that it helps to organize international conference both at home and abroad. If country want to organize what you call international conference that other countries will be present, it's called a, an issue you know, affecting the whole world, this ministry will establish the conference. It assists government to receive and prepare for the foreign visitation. If some people, some uh, countries, they are coming to visit us, Nigeria is the one that we prepare and receive them. If Nigeria is going to another country as a decision, it will also go with uh, Nigeria. It is in charge of the pilgrimage to Mecca and Jerusalem. It's among the functions. It administrates Nigeria diplomatic relationship uh, with other countries. Uh, it formulated as it formulates foreign policy objectives. You know, we discussed the objective for Nigeria foreign policy. So this ministry assists to formulate the objective. It conducted external relations with international organizations like UNO, like ECOWAS, all these relationship activities that lead to the relationship the ministry used to uh, conduct it. Then another thing that we need to know is uh, non-alignment policy. Non-alignment policy, as I said, is neither be with uh, uh, neither be with West or, uh, or East. So you are neutral. You are neutral. So you are neither there, you are not there, uh, nor here. So this policy is an African and Asia policy. Inshallah, we are going to put stop to it by next class we meet, we are going to continue, continue from where we stopped. Before then, I want to advise you, my students, I've already put it for you there on that text that you go and look at some questions there. So it's an assignment. And inshallah, before today's runs out, I will give another question, objective question, in which I will be expecting you people to do it and submit it immediately. So we pray that Allah should aid our understanding about the topic. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.